You're listening to the Packernet Podcast Network. Does Monday at the office feel like a storm? Not with Microsoft Copilot. That feeling when Copilot gets everyone up to speed instantly? It's sunny again. When Copilot simplifies complex data so your teams can act, that sun's shining on a beach. And when Copilot uncovers hidden insights, you're on that beach with your people and you find buried treasure. That's Microsoft Copilot. Learn more at Microsoft.com slash AI for all. Survivor 46 is here and so is On Fire, the only official Survivor podcast. And we have a twist this season. The winner of Survivor 45, D. Valladares, will be joining us every week. We're going behind the scenes of the biggest moments, the how and the why things happen, and the strategy and analysis you can only get from someone like me, a Survivor winner. Listen to On Fire, the official Survivor podcast, wherever you get your podcasts. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome once again to the Packernet Fantasy Podcast, also known as PFP. You can check us out online at packernet.com. You can find us on the Twitter slash X slash Instagram at underscore PF Podcast. Thanks for that, Elon. I am your host, Jacob Buss. With me are my co-hosts, Tony, <clears throat> not Justin, and Bad Luck Paul. Where's Justin at? I, he's like the, he's Ray Mysterio Jr. Jr. <laughs> We miss Junior. you, Justin. He's is incognito. What is his I wife about that guy? So what has she done? What has she done to him? I don't think the I don't think that she's the one that's beating him up. We learned that Justin has a secret past. He's an under, underground fighter. We'll get into that. I just want to let everybody know that the uh, the show is brought to you by Fertile Ground Ranch Discipleship Ministry. I'm going to go for it. Fertile Ground Ranch Discipleship Ministry, or FGR, was birthed out of a burden to help those in our community and congregations who have come out of a difficult past or an addictive lifestyle and feel. The, ah, dang, I almost had it. Who called to devote their lives to the Christ and his church? FertileGroundRanch.org. Again, that's FertileGroundRanch.org. I really thought I was going to nail it. I was pretty good, though. I could be more happy that you screwed that up. I screwed it up once. Ugh. Yeah. I, yeah. Well, uh, there's a lot to talk about. I honestly don't even know where to start. Justin used to be a boxer slash MMA person. We'll start there. Um, <clears throat> About 135 pounds. If you guys he used to fight Justin at 135 like, pounds. I shall call him mini. He doesn't look like that. I'm going to say. He's a little guy. He's just a little guy. <laughs> a little judgy, guys. A little, guy. a little judgy. Well, I'm just saying. I used to, I I'm did a fight. I've once. never met just. I've never met Justin in person, but in my head, now he's like five foot two and a little rail. <laughs> he's not. He's like just above my eye level when I looked at him. His mustache and my mustache were like. <laughs> All right. It's <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Never mind. Which, which mustache, Jacob? All right. There we go. Thanks for that. So let's get back on track since it's already off the rails. Uh, since Wait, we last you talked talking about the. Never mind. Stop it. Since we last talked, <laughs> a lot of stuff has gone down, and it's in fantasy football, it's in Packer football, it's in <laughs> the world, I guess. Uh, the first thing I want to promote, slash plug, slash get into is last year we had two. Packernet fantasy football leagues. We had the day one who was basically like the, the OG. That's the real one that we wanted. It had me, Paul, um, Tony and Justin all in it. And then eight of you guys, eight of the listeners. And it was a really, it was fun. It was a good success, except for the fact that Justin won. Um, I didn't do well loser. in that league. <laughs> yeah. You loser. <laughs> you are one pathetic loser. <laughs> you suck for winning loser. Um <laughs> So yeah, this this year we did an invite. What I did, I'll admit it, I nuked the Packernet Fantasy Yahoo League 2.0 just because it was more of like a, it, it was kind of an afterthought. I had my old boss in it, my brother's in it. So obviously I want to cancel that. Sorry, Sam. Uh, but no, it just was, it wasn't that fun to have two of the same exact style of leagues. There was no difference in them other than the fact that we just had you know, two different leagues. We had some spillover. People expressed that they wanted to get into that league. Uh, right now, it looks like pretty much 12 out of 12 people have committed to come back for the original Packernet Fantasy League, which again, Justin won and I sent him the trophy. Yeah, it did take me about four or five months and it took me a minute. I paid the other guy too that won the other league. It just, you know, it was impromptu. 
So I, I, you, I paid you guys out of my own pocket. Shut up. Um, so what we're doing, though, is we're going to revamp the Packernet Fantasy League, the original, the OG. We got like guys like Neil, Cheese Packers, uh, um, gosh, Geico Gecko. Um, a bunch of those guys are coming back. Um, so that's going to be fun. And I want to I'm going to back, put, fellas. I'm going to be put, a pleasure to beat you again. Uh, Paul, you did not beat anybody. Justin, what? Anyways, I had to buy a trophy, so I'm gonna buy another. Like, it's gonna be an even better trophy this year. I'm gonna go. There's this place called like Trophy. Uh, do you guys know what I'm talking about? It's that weird website that makes specifically like over the top fantasy football trophies slash rings slash belts. So I'm gonna mm-hmm. throw in at least a hundred dollars into this, making some sort of a- extravagant trophy for that league, and then I'm also probably gonna dive into my money, my own funding. Actually, you know what? Tony's gonna pay for it. Tony makes way more yeah. money. Yeah. Tony's going to pay for the top three placers in that league. We haven't worked it out yet. We'll, we'll figure it out. But what I'm really excited about, what I really want to plug is what is called the Packernet Fantasy Podcast Extreme PFP League. Now, let me tell you about this. I'm not going to lie. It's a little crazy. And that's the point because fantasy football has become kind of like uh, you get drafted team. Even like best ball is great because you don't have to worry about your week to week strategy and that kind of stuff. Um, but listen to our last episode and we did a best ball if you're interested in it. Right. Best ball is great. Check that out. It's we, we have actually been drafting way too early. We'll get into the, maybe a little bit of that. It's now uh, August 6th as we're recording this Sunday evening afternoon. Um, so a lot of the stuff, you know, but I will say the guy, I, I read that the guy that won the grand prize for the draft Kings, he drafted his team in July last year. So I wouldn't say it's too early by, by any means. It's just not probably the odds are not in your favor if you're one of those types of people. Uh, but what I do again, want to place, uh, want to plug is the Packernet fantasy extreme PFP league. It's a 14 man fantasy league. It's PPR full PPR. It's a super flex, which means that you can have in addition to your typical lineup, you have <clears throat> the super flex can be a quarterback wide receiver, running back, tight end, and that's a it, it just throws a massive wrinkle, especially into the fact that it's a 14 person league. There's 32 teams in the league. That means there's 32 starting quarterbacks. 14 man league basically dictates that if you don't take at least two quarterbacks, you are going to be, you know, a little uh, SOL. So uh, the super flex is a really great kind of thing that the full PPR is another wrinkle that just makes it interesting in draft strategy. And in addition to that, we're adding two defensive players. Ridiculous. Now defensive players is a whole nother wrinkle that you have to think about. There's anything from um, the scoring is similar, but not necessarily the same, obviously as the offensive scoring, but it's the same ratio. Um, a, a touchdown, six points interception, I believe is, two or three sack is two or three. It's one of those type deals. I did tweak the scoring a little bit so that a stop behind the line um, is like a point. Cause it didn't have it pointed at all, but I want that to be a little mix so that we can maybe get more guys like on the defensive line. So typically you're looking for like the top corners, the top edge defenders. If you have a crazy sick linebacker or something like that, it just gives us another way to look at stuff. So anyways, I've talked my, my brain off. It's a $20 buy-in. It's, $14, or I'm sorry, 14 people, $20 buy-in, snag your spot while it's hot, as Justin said, while he made our graphic. First place is going to get a payout of $168, bucks. 2 2nd place, $84, third place, $28. You get more than your money back. It's just whatever, consolation. But it's a good chunk of money, and if any of us win, we are going to donate that winning to charity, unless it's Paul, because Paul, he's poor. He I'll, probably donate. Needs- I'll donate to charity. I love charity. You mean the girl you charity I, that works you, at the Raging Cajun? Is that what you're talking about? Because <laughs> that doesn't. Jacob, how not, did you know about her so fast? Well, that's there's been question. a couple different charities that work there, and they all have daddy <laughs> issues. I'm just saying. No, all right, let's move on. Uh, so, anyways, guys, get into that league. I'm going to post a link for that on Twitter as soon as this goes um, live. Or actually, as soon as we're done recording, so before it goes live, and it'd be just fun. I'm, I'm hoping that Tony, Paul, and Justin. Paul has expressed that he hates doing anything with defensive players, but it, that's the whole point of this. It's a really crazy multifaceted. It's like that Mike, uh, the office. I, did, meme. I figured out what I was going to do. I'm just going to go first, first overall pick. I'm going to go with the defensive player and I'm just going to solve it in my first few picks. And then I'm, worry about it. I'm going Joey Bosa. 
all day. Joey. Nice. Nice. I'm going like Reggie White. Better, but... Going Reggie. Uh, <laughs> so anyways, let's just jump into some, some real quick news and notes type, type stuff. Training camp. Last night was the Green Bay Packers family night. It was, it was interesting to say the least. It was uh, not televised unless you live basically within a football's throw of Green Bay. And Mark Murphy and the Green Bay Packers organization slash FBI slash the Wisconsin FBI, whatever the heck that is, they made sure that if you were streaming that, they shut you down hard. I was on, um, I was watching Boz, Boz's stream. Uh, if you guys don't know Boz, he's a massively awesome dude on YouTube. Check him out, Bozorowski. I believe it's, uh, I think that's what his title's called on YouTube. Um, super, super really in-depth guy that does some really great videos. He was streaming the family night because he found a way, I don't know if it was a VPN. I don't think, I think he specifically said it was not a VPN. He does something through Google Chrome where he changes his location so that it's like, anyways, I'm not a tech guy, but that's basically what he said. And last year he got away with it because all he did was hold a Madden controller. I'm sorry, Xbox controller in his hand and had Madden like a screen on in the background and said that this was a Madden stream. And then would randomly just hold up his controller and be like X, Y Madden's fun. Um, and he got away with it. So this year he was really exciting. I think the stream got up to like thousands and thousands of people last year. And sure enough, this year he started it and it was up to a good four to five, maybe even maybe more thousand people. And all of a sudden, boom, uh, it said the Green Bay Packers have hit this stream with a content, whatever violation restriction, blah, blah, blah. So YouTube removed it. Then I went over, Clayton was like, yo, here's a local NBC uh, Green Bay channel that's got it streaming. Click that up. It was perfect, crystal clear. Watching it for about 15 minutes or so, was able to take a good amount of notes for the first couple, first team and second team offense drills. And then boom, it clips to some stupid old chick talking to me about retirement benefits and all this bull crap. Apparently, I hate goodbyes. <laughs> they even contacted the NBC affiliate and said, do not air this. The Green Bay Packers are worried about people seeing their pr protected schemes and practices, quote unquote, even though there's 70,000 people in the stands and it's broadcast to the greater Green Bay area, which is, I would say, at least millions, few million, low million. I don't get it. I never understood that. It makes me upset. As you guys can understand, Paul and Tony have lived on the west side of Wisconsin with me for basically our whole lives. And we are subject it's basically to Minnesota. It's basically Minnesota. It's Minnesota. You, right. you can't even get you can't even get the Wisconsin channels unless you like go out of your way to do it. And I went on my high horse and really uh, last night. And it's like, even as a guy. All right. So you're a Viking fan. Obviously, you want to see your fan, but imagine if you lived so close to Wisconsin that you got all our coverage. Can you imagine? Like, what would you do if you didn't have the, the metropolis just, right next to you? I would. I would probably just be a Vikings fan instead, because <laughs> that's where you basically live. Well, and so that's what I'm saying: is we have the utmost willpower, best fans of all time. Me and Tony for slugging out through this crap. And the worst part is too is like we hey, get you got we, we, everybody has crappy politicians that just suck and just are liars. And, but we have to listen to it like your, you know what I'm saying? We have to listen to your politicians. We don't even get our own sleaze bag liars. We have to listen to your sleaze bag liars. Mm -hmm. And we no, have to be, be like, I mean, don't call them mine. I live in Wisconsin. Okay. Okay. I'm that's true. That dumb. Sorry. Okay. Sorry. I, that's I true. live in Wisconsin. I just appreciate a better football team. <laughs> Sorry, just threw my mouth <laughs> a little bit. Uh, so, how. was there uh, was there any training camp highlights on the Viking side? Because we've heard a lot about the Packers and and their successes, their storylines, their up and comers, their rookies, their year two guys, guys that are fighting okay. for, for squads. What do you so, got for me, Paul? I want some um, insider I, stuff. I mean, I'm I'm definitely hearing that Justin Jefferson is looking better than he's ever looked, uh, which is saying something. I mean, that I've never heard someone say that. That's uh, a mystery. But really, the 2022, so last year's draft class, uh, just total busts. I mean, Lewis Seen is I love it. Uh, still on the second team. Andrew Booth Jr. is injured again. Ed Ingram was the worst guard in football last year. That's your first three <laughs> picks. Uh, yeah. So the last year's draft class is looking terrible. This year's draft class, I'm hearing really, really good things. Jordan Addison is, uh, I mean, I, I haven't seen him yet. I, I have not attended a training camp yet, although I probably should. Uh, I have free tickets to it. Um, just Come on, dude. haven't had time. I mean, I, haven't, I just haven't had time. And the guy I have the tickets with, you know, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I don't know. He hasn't had time either. We're, you know, anyways, 
Uh, anyway, Vikings, I, I Vikings fan. Every, Vikings fan. Every, every day I'm just hearing that Addison's blowing up. Yeah, Vikings fan. There you go. You sons of. Uh, every day I'm hearing Addison's blowing up. Uh, their third round Ricky cornerback that they took, Makai Becton. Uh, yeah. Mackay Blackman, Blackman is uh, Blackman. is is uh, running with the first team, and then we have a. Uh, we have an undrafted rookie free agent linebacker, Ivan Pace Jr. He was the first te- he was first team All American last year for Cincinnati. Uh, somehow did not get drafted. He's literally running with the ones right now. We're early in training. Okay, We're so we have we have a similar type situation. He's not is your guys like a true linebacker? Or is he an edge? He's a middle linebacker. Okay, a little bit undersized, kind of like a Zach. What was the? Uh, gosh, I just lost it. Zach Taylor oh. back in the day. You know, Thomas or Taylor? Zach Thomas. Zach Thomas. Zach Thomas. Zach Zach Thomas. Thomas. Yeah. Miami guy? Not the, yeah, coach, yeah. not the coach of the Bengals. Zach Thomas, yes. Uh, yeah, kind, of, kind of sounded like that. Uh, who I think he was an undrafted guy, too, to be honest. But uh, for an undrafted guy to be running with the number, the ones this early in camp is is uh, crazy. So I'm a little bit excited to see training camp <laughs> this year. Or, I mean, pre- preseason this year. See some of these young guys play a little bit extra, you know. Um, and last year, I mean, I hated last year's class to start off with, and it's just getting worse this year, to be totally honest. I wouldn't even be surprised if some of these guys get cut who okay. are high picks. Well, uh, it's nice to hear a Viking fan actually be honest. I mean, you were you were actually speaking pretty quick there, Paul. That was you were speaking faster than uh Jordan Addison on his way to the vet. But um bum nailed it. Killed who, has a, <laughs> who hasn't tried to drive as fast as you can when you're 20 years old? I mean, I'm just saying, if you're rich, you just got a Lamborghini for the first time. Are you, I mean, in the Lamborghini, the morning, not- I was driving that fast in my uh, Grand Prix, my 1994. I mean, come on, I'm just saying, imagine you're 20 years old, you're all of a sudden rich, uh, and you have a Lamborghini. You're not taking that thing out in the middle of the night, not, not drunk, by the way, not drunk. You're not taking that thing out to see how fast it can go. Come on. Look, I'm not going to argue because uh, Packernet After Dark, which I know you guys don't listen to because you're not awesome people. Uh, we have actually had a, a guy named Jersey Mike called in from uh, well Jersey, <laughs> and uh, he talked about how he passes people going 140 on his crotch rocket and how like his sandwiches. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, I didn't even know. Is it the Jersey that, Mike? Do you think? I don't think so. I don't think he'd be wasting his time like being like, oh, I got this multi million dollar sub chain, but you know what I need to do. I got to call in. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he's I a fan, really Jacob. It, you never I know. really, really, really hope it is. Uh, he's just like, no one's going to think it's actually me. <laughs> actually, it would be amazing. No one's going to believe that it's me. Yeah. It's like, why would I care? All right. Um, so that's actually good. Um, Tony, do you have anything you want to – did you get to, by chance to, uh, to talk or to see Family Night? I didn't actually get to watch it, no. But I do have some big news. While we're recording right now, I just got a text message. I'm not uh, at liberty to say from who, but oh, we God. just got another listener while we're on the podcast right now. How can I watch your podcast? Listen to it on Spotify. You know, we're a big deal now. And maybe even on YouTube, we can get Paul's weird face on there where he's doing all that weird stuff on camera. I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah, well, eventually the goal is to move this to your YouTube platform. You guys just have to stop cussing so much so that I can not have to edit it. Uh, Count Clayton, to zero right now. Clayton has been going... Uh, live on YouTube and Twitter and Facebook Live. I've been guest hosting with him for quite a while now, but really kind of taking it seriously for the last month and a half, two months, really trying to capitalize on the off season. And man, dude, his show is absolutely blowing up. He's had guys like Andy Herman, uh, Tony Mandrich. He's had, he's about to get some ex Packer players, some very recent ones. He's about to get some, current Packer players, if things go well, uh, a bunch of, of different Packers. Paul Brettel was there. I mean, we have gotten... Is this why we haven't recorded this? Because you're busy? To be honest, yeah, a little bit. Well, it's hard to wrangle. It's like you guys are like four We love cats. you, Clayton, but stop stealing our talent. I'm just saying. Clayton's... Uh, he's Mr... Uh, that dude runs the business, bro. He's he's like an entrepreneur, owns three or four businesses, and he's got this, this stuff on lockdown. So if you guys want to check it out, actually, um, he put a highlight video together of the Packers family night. Let me check and refresh this quick, because the last time I checked, it was doing quite well. And as of now, yeah, dang. All right. So this thing's got 8.6 thousand views in the last 16 hours. Even just the, the we usually do a, a recap, or I'm sorry, a post-game show. Um, which we continued from last year. That one's got 1.1 thousand views with me and uh, him just kind of talking about the 
the family night situation. So I'm just saying to keep tuned in. We're going to keep cranking out content us as a network here. As soon as we get this thing the season really vamps up, we're going to at least do one to two solid shows a week. And we'll probably do some, maybe in, like stuff. Like if me and Tony can hop on for even 15, 20 minutes, if me and Paul can hop on for 15, 20 minutes, me and Justin, if Justin ever comes out of his hibernation therapy, rehab i just uh, hey i just want to let all packer nation know that justin doesn't think that there's any football to talk about between the draft and the season starting well he's not a year-round kind of guy he's not a year-round kind of guy he's like one of those guys that wants to like hang out with his family like what ugh. a kind of ca- priorities we've talked about this how many times his exactly. priorities are just messed up I know. it's just I, weird I, he went to a funeral the other day and i was like we're drafting and he's like my <laughs> and I was like, God, <laughs> suck it up. Anyways, <laughs> anyway, sorry about your loss. Oh, no, I'm kidding. Uh, so here's a, some random. I'm relatively st- sure his wife beat him, beat him after the draft, <laughs> and he just doesn't want to show his face for a while. Facial reconstruction surgery. That's my theory. Like, I'm not doing that again. <laughs> yeah, he's a lizard person. They're just trying to fix his face. All right, so let's look into the, some random stats that I thought were interesting slash funny. I don't know why I was just in a frame of mind where I was looking at random stats, just clicking through the different categories. And I, I highlighted these actually a couple of weeks ago. I believe most of this is just stats on its face. If some of it has to do with fantasy football, I'll try to let you know if it's standard or PPR scoring, but just one thing that hit me off the top of my head of all the, the quarterbacks in all the leagues last year of all, of all the divisions, I should say who had the most sacks was Justin Fields. And he did not drop back as often as you would expect for somebody that got sacked that many times. He had 55 sacks, followed by Russell Wilson, followed by Geno Smith at 46. That's a big jump there. Another thing that I thought, again, was interesting or noteworthy was the amount of drops each quarterback had, starting with the top. Trevor Lawrence, 39 wide receivers dropped his balls, followed by Herbert, matched at the 39. But number third overall was Aaron Rodgers. And now it says New York Jets. That's, co- that's, that means- concern- that's concerning, isn't it? It's concerning if you consider the fact that half of his wide receiver crew has went with him to New York. It's encouraging if you consider the fact. I that definitely, I definitely remember one drop that. There's a, a wide big receiver, one. Stop it, big Paul. One. Stop it. I just there was one drop I kind of remember. I have said this over and over. Still on the team. And and so to be fair, 100% going into this year, my biggest fear is the drops, specifically with Dobbs, with Watson, now with Musgrave, and now with. With Jaden Reed, I just—it's not that it's a um, quick question. This is a real question: Is Jaden Reed uh, what's is what's his status these days? How's he doing in camp? He's looking very good. He's looking very really? dominant. I would not. Is he going to be third? He's, he's number third? three. I would say for sure. Um, week okay. one, I would say he's number number three, fourth at the absolute. Worst. I haven't got him on a lot of my teams yet, uh, but I, he's a very I, good I, late round sleeper. I think that he's one of those guys. That I intend get. to. Well, I think his quarterback's going to be the MVP this year, so I kind of want the third receiver on the for the MVP this year. Uh, I've been a big Musgrave fan too. So, right. Well, and here's the thing: I was the point that I'm making is the top five. I should say that the five quarterbacks that have the largest drop drops in the NFL last year was Trevor Lawrence, Justin Herbert, Aaron Rodgers, Josh Allen, Jared Goff, all of them within a grouping of within like five balls. So. Imagine <laughs> if, imagine we're children and imagine though, if those five drops are not, I mean, those are very quality quarterbacks there with quality teams. It's, it's an interesting dynamic that you would think if you see the most drops, you're going to see bad teams. Those are decent teams right now. I mean, other than Aaron Rodgers last year, who had Zach Wilson pretty much and Mike white and all those guys, it's just, it's kind of a weird dynamic. So imagine if they get better, that, those better teams are only going to get more scary and dangerous. In my opinion, Uh, here's one that I thought was kind of funny. The yards um, per attempt for passing. Again, this is take this with a big grain of salt, but um, Jacob Eason was number one. He only played one game. He was three for five. Jordan love played four games. MVP 14 to 21, 67%. He had 195 yards and 9.3 overall yards per attempt. I'm just saying MVP. MVP. There's guys on this list. MVP. Patrick Mahomes is like eighth. <laughs> Teddy Bridgewater is like fourth. Garner Minshew. So it's a, it's a lot of guys that play filler. But Jalen Hurts is like tenth on this. Jimmy Garoppolo is like twelfth. So um, that's not a who's who of quarterbacks. I don't know what is. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Garner might have a big year. Okay, 
Now, here's what I'm looking at for attempts. Now, this is a big one for me. Attempts for running back. Just attempts, not, you know, yardage, nothing like that. Derrick Henry, obviously the king, 350. Josh Jacobs, 340. It's a, You wonder why the guy had such a great year. Well, they force-fed him the ball. Nick Chubb, 302. Saquon Barkley, 295. Najee Harris, 272. And then our own, your used to be own. Well, I should say your, your used to be own, Paul. Delvin Cook, a.k.a. free agent Delvin Cook, 264. <laughs> That guy has never been good. He has just been force fed the football over Whoa. and over and over. Oh, <laughs> this is the guy who just jerks off over here. Aaron Jones. Okay. Right. All right. Um, what I do not do is self pleasure myself to Aaron Jones. <laughs> what I do is say, uh, let's look at his stats. Like the guy has been the most underutilized running back. Now, if you just said Christian Watson, sure. Well, sure. I mean, yeah. <laughs> Have you seen that guy? I mean, come on. <laughs> come on. I mean, like you look at the, the, the Aaron Jones has been arguably one of the most underutilized, under underutilized talents in of any position. I mean, especially running back. And I get the way the reason that they did is because they want to quote unquote that's like preserve your opinion. him. No, the, the facts are that he's never averaged less than like five and a half yards per carry, except for like one year when it was like, I don't that's know, because he hasn't gotten a huge workload. He's well, a, he's he still a gets over a thousand yards pretty much every single year and they use him in the passing game. So I'm just saying, I, I, I really, really think that that's uh, as a matter of fact, let's take a look right here. Yards per attempt. Hmm. What a weird thing. Pierre strong. He had 10 attempts, 10 uh, games. He had a hundred yards. Guess what guys? He's he's a perfect 10 right there. Trey Sermon, Kylan Hill, seven, <laughs> seven point oh. He had a one rush for one uh attempt for seven yards. So that makes Matt is Kylan Hill sense. even on the roster this year? No, nah, he's not. No, he wasn't on uh we cut him last year. So he's been floating around. I'm surprised he hasn't been signed, to be honest. Um but uh, you got guys like Khalil Herbert, James Cook, Brees Hall, Rashad Penny, Elijah Mitchell, Mitchell, JK Dobbins, who Tony's in love with, DeAndre Swift's at 5.5, and then Aaron Jones at basically 10th overall at 5.3. So I'm just saying the guy's very underutilized. And here's another thing I want to say yards after contact. That's a good one. Josh Jacobs, 828. Derrick Henry, 803. Nick Chubb, 702. Saquon Barkley, 564. Damian Pierce, 506. I did. I knew why I threw this in here is because I wanted to give a hat tip. Uh, so there's Tony Pollard at 503 and then Delvin Cook at 486, which I wanted to acknowledge. Yes, he, he has some good yards after contact, so he does have his way. But then Aaron Jones, the guy that you claim, who has... So your offensive line is terrible? Is that what you're trying to tell me? No, I'm going to look at this real quick because I got it pulled up. His games, both of them played 17 games. The attempts, Delvin Cook had 264 to uh, Jones is 213. That's a lot less, Paul. That's 50 less, pretty much. Delvin Cook had 1173 Aaron Jones yardage, 1121. Delvin Cook averaged 4.4 4. 4 yards per carry. Aaron Jones, 5.3. Yeah, your and guy then, can't carry the load. That's what I'm trying to say. You, you, I have, there's so many jokes. I'm not even going <laughs> to go there. Anyways, I'm going to stop there, even though I have one more that I thought would be great. Actually, no, I'm not going to stop there. The targets of all running backs. Now, this is where you would never even be able to hold a candle. Delvin Cook can... Literally not clean my shoes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. He's the eighth ranked running back in targets. Now there's a big gap between Austin Eckler with his 127 targets, which is number one. And then Aaron Jones at 72, but basically it goes 72, 75, 76, 77, 83, 88, 108 for Christian McCaffrey and then 127. So honestly, I'm looking at that. If you're in a PPR league, if you're in a best ball league, anything like that, I'm looking at Aaron Jones. Why would you not think that he jumps way ahead of a lot of these running backs, definitely in front of free agent Delvin Cook. Sounds like he's awfully gimmicky to me. You're gimmicky to me. I like the slowdown, there, I, Jacob. That delivery. I am really down on. More than... I've been working on it. I've been looking at myself, like you know. It's, it I am slower. down with Cook. Just FYI, I mean, I'm not trying to be a cook backer right now. <laughs> cook, cook what? Not trying to be a chef. I'm just saying you're compared to, p- comparing him to a washed up Delvin Cook. Oh, that's okay. Well, um, do me one favor, fellas. I have to grab my dog real quick. So what we're going to do now is we're going to trap. We're going to talk about the Pickums. Oh, did you guys know, by the way, this is going to be from Drafters. This next segment is brought to you by Drafters, even though they're not a sponsor. But hey, check them out. It's a decent site. Um, a lot of them are it popping up. 
they're they're pretty good. They're what we're gonna do now is we're gonna do full season over unders, and we've got basically the whole NFC North. Anybody that's kind of a um, a positional player, quarterbacks, running backs, wide receivers, maybe a couple tight ends, and just do our simple over unders. See what we think about that. We could lock them in live, but I don't really want to throw that money down. I did do a couple of these because they were so outrageous that I. I, when I was doing the show notes, I had to actually lock in my own bets. I'm going to go let my dog out real quick. You guys take over for like 30 seconds and just talk about whether or not you think Jared Goff is going to have over four. That's very specific. 4,000.5 passing yards or 25.5 passing touchdowns. Go. Was that an innuendo I heard you say about letting the dog out? No, Anyways, that's no, God. Jared Goff. Ooh, let Jared Goff. The dog I think out. It, I'm pretty sure it was. Uh, Jared Goff over 4,000 and a half passing yards. Uh, personally, I'm not buying into the Lions. Uh, for my whole life, they've been the Lions uh, from Detroit, and they've just been awful. And anytime they have a glimpse of success, Barry Sanders, Herman Moore, uh, Kelvin uh, Johnson, Scott Mitchell, Kelvin Johnson, uh, yep. any of those times, they get all hyped up after they have just a little bit of success, don't even make the playoffs. And then all year you hear them just talk and smack like they're, I don't know, the 49ers or something. You know what I mean? Like they just don't have it. They're never going to have it. Jared Goff <clears throat> is going to revert to what he was. The tape is out on the, on the squad. And I, I just, I'm not a, I'm, I'm just, I'm just not a Detroit believer. Although uh, their last game was amazing. Hey, U.S. Cellular customers, I've got good news. So don't hit skip forward just yet. I'm talking about their special customer event, Us Days. What's us days? It means exclusive offers just for their customers, just to say thanks, like up to $1,200 to upgrade to any new phone. No, I didn't just misread that. That's up to $1,200 off. They must really like you. Us days at U.S. Cellular, exclusive offers just for you, just to say thanks. Right now, U.S. Cellular customers get up to $1,200 to upgrade to any new phone. Terms apply. Hey, it's Kaylee Cuoco for Priceline. Ready to go to your happy place for a happy price? Well, why didn't you say so? Just download the Priceline app right now and save up to 60% on hotels. So whether it's Cousin Kevin's Kazoo concert in Kansas City, go Kevin! Or Becky's Bachelorette Bash in Bermuda. You never have to miss a trip ever again. So download the Priceline app today. Your savings are waiting. Go to your happy place for a happy price. Go to your happy price. Priceline. This episode is brought to you by Pepsi Wild Cherry. Pepsi Wild Cherry is bursting with delicious cherry flavor and a sweet, crisp taste that gives you more to go wild for. Getting wild may look different these days, but whether it's opting for a solo Friday binge watch or a big night out, everyone can indulge in their wild side with Pepsi Wild Cherry, also available in Zero Sugar. So grab a Pepsi Wild Cherry and get wild. That's, I mean, that was really bush league you to throw in at the end, but I, I hate you. Uh, I, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to agree and disagree with you. Uh, everything you said is 100% true, except the fact that I don't think their defense is there, and I think their offense has actually put together some good talent. Uh, I think they're going to be in a lot of high-scoring games because the defense isn't good. Whether or not they're successful, I don't think they're going to be like a Who's contender. their second wide receiver right now? Well, Jamison Williams will be back later in the year, but it's um, – Marvin Jones, right? I don't even know. That's what I'm Khalif saying. Raymond. Yeah, they got Marvin Jones, Khalif Raymond. Who's their tight end? Uh, they they got a hey, Laporta. Hey, that's a legit yeah. thing. Laporta apparently is legit tight end one, and he looks amazing. I saw some clips of him doing one-handed grabs, doing like some very like across his body catches. Laporta coming out of Iowa was one of my, honestly, the only other tight end that I would have loved. You loved, loved every tight end in the draft. For the, first the top four six. Rounds, so yeah, I did. They I were did. all your guy. Exactly. There's a joke there too, but I'm not going to say it. But oh, hear me out. Hear me out. Hear me out. Man. Last year, with less weapons and uh, Amon Ra missed a couple of games, I think. Maybe I'm wrong. Uh, Goff wrong. put up 4,429 touchdowns. So I think he could go over on both the stats that Jacob said. I don't think Detroit's going to be like a Super Bowl contender or maybe not even a playoff team, but I do think that the offense with some young talent and wasn't their offensive line really banged up last year or something? They weren't as good as they could be. I know that. Panay Sewell has been great. I think they made a couple of their early draft picks that have kind of worked out, but I just, so, I'm scared of the Lions. I'm not going to lie. They just, they got that kneecap biting mentality that dan campbell put dude, in you have them. the mvp on your team there's nothing to be scared of 
You're fine. I don't know what you want me to say. You're I just fine. stop I, being scared. I, Tony, it's you want to finish lions. your thoughts? Finish your thought. Bro, it's the lions. You're just all I'm saying is overall give a little fantasy spin here because that's you know that's my 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 role here uh a lot of people are super high on jameer gibbs i'm unsure whether he's going to be as awesome as everybody thinks or not i have you know a few shares not a lot of him but i do think the offense as a whole and Goff's going to throw the ball more so to your original point 40 you know 4200 4400 paul stop doing that to the camera you weirdo (laughs) and uh I think he could hit 30 touchdowns this year at, at most. He's not going to like sweat 40 or something, but uh, I, th- I think he could have like an average, maybe a top top 15, top 18 quarterback year. Okay. Yeah, I, I, can, I can see that. Um, I am a little bit nervous about the Lions. I I do see them taking a step forward, and then it's just wonder whether or not their defense. It's kind of like in the way that I see the Packers, I don't necessarily see the offense – I think the Lions have an explosive offense and they have a really, really iffy defense that could make or break whether or not their season's even really good or really, really bad. The offense for the Packers, I'm really not sure of, but if our defense is top top 10, top five, top three, I mean, that could drag us along a lot of the way, especially if Jordan Love can just be a game manager. I think Jared Goff is one of the more underrated quarterbacks in the league especially last year. I mean, he showed what he can do. He could protect the ball. If I'm on Raw, takes the step, MVP, a game manager talk about underrated. If he can, I'm saying if he can be a game manager, I don't even know if he I'm is saying. yet. I want him to be that this year. That's all I expect because want to know what, if we don't have that, then we have something else. That crap pile of steaming dung that they call Justin Fields. That's a segue. Let's move on to him. 29, 50 and a half passing yards. Think about that. The guy they're projecting this dude at 29, 100 yards basically passing 18 See, and a half. How you're nervous about the Lions? I'm nervous about the Bears here. Uh, don't get me wrong. I'm nervous too. It's just like anytime you, you, you know, your enemy. Could I just be- think Ju- Justin, Justin Fields, and you give him some DJ Moore, uh, another year of experience. Those legs, I mean, they are sexy. Have you watched anything in the offseason about what he looks like in, in the OTAs and the mini camps and their, in their, in their version of Family Night? He does not look good, dude. He's not a good passer of the football. He had he was statistically one of the worst passing quarterbacks, not just last year, but in modern history. And people are enamored with he's this also, guy. He's also one of the best running quarterbacks. In okay, that's fine. Modern How long history. do they so take last? I'm just saying, it dry, it, well, this is the second, his, what, his third year. He's young. Lamar Jackson, his third year, won the MVP, I believe. So, well, this and is he's kind of become a passing quarterback, running, though. But this is kind of the year those running quarterbacks take an extra step is what I'm saying in the third year. So uh, I think Justin Fields might have a humongous year, actually, like an MVP type year this year, adding uh, DJ Moore in there. So uh, if Justin Fields wasn't in the same division and leading his team to a 15-1 to record, I mean, I would say Justin Fields is probably the MVP. But Jordan Love is going to win the MVP. So Sure. Right. Uh, so they've got him slated at 875 and a half rushing yards. I mean, that I could see that because Justin Fields, in my he, opinion, like over. Ryan, like Ryan says, he's not a quarterback per se. He's basically a running back. And then also the Bears, they went out with their offseason money. They had a lot of money to spend and they bought like a so so offensive lineman, I believe. They got like two really overpaid linebackers for whatever reason. And then they bought like four running backs or like three or four running backs. So they've got what, like Khalil Herbert, who I think could be a starter. They've got Roshan Johnson, who probably could be a starter. They've got, they lost David Montgomery to the lions who could be a better starter than Jameer Gibbs, in my opinion. Um, who else do they have on there? They have like two other ones that could arguably be starters. I thought uh, they got they, the guy from Deontay Dante Johnson, Foreman. Deontay Foreman. Sorry. Dante. Yep. Um, so it's like, what are you doing? Clearly they're showing that they want to be a run heavy team in this league but if ryan's been really hard on the analytics and and crunching into those being an, a run first team in the nfl in the last modern history is just not the way you win football games it's just not so i don't see i mean there's a difference between running it between the tackles with an eye formation and then i guess having justin fields do justin fields type stuff which don't get me wrong i do agree he's a freak of nature you get him outside the pocket he starts being able to run he's not he's he's like Cam Newton, but a little bit more. I'd, I'd say a little better of a runner. 
lesser of a passer. Um, I just, I'm not, for whatever reason, I'm not afraid of him. They got a slate him, got him slated at seven rushing touchdowns. Again, I think that might be an easy over. I'd probably go easy yeah. over on both of those rushing categories. I don't, I, I don't think he's going to pass for 18 touchdowns. I really don't. He looks like hot garbage. Clayton put out a really funny, um, <laughs> clip of uh jordan love just dropping a couple dimes into like at packer night there was one to christian watson there was one i believe to maybe Jaden reed one to musgrave and then it showed there was like an end of practice celebration thing where they put a bunch of water balloons in front of all the chicago bears people and freaking <laughs> justin fields grabs like this water balloon to a handful of them and he goes to throw it at a guy that's like five foot in front of him and he just airmails it right into the right into the ground like two times in a row just <laughs> like hits him right in the ankles and everybody's just like oh god that's a good sign so let's move on kirk cousins kirk i'm on the football netflix now cousins i will admit have, i do i do enjoy watched it? it i watched uh the first couple episodes um and i'm i'm not i wanted to hate it i wanted to hate it because i'm not a fan of any of these guys any of them and i hate that i liked him so now i stopped watching so i stopped feeling like towards him kirk cousins is, is, a, is a funny guy he's a funny dude he's a good guy what do you what are your thoughts on 4300 I, I think you and kirk O'Chains would align politically buddy Polit- I, I don't know about that i think Maybe. you would actually i think you would hang out with him for sure go shout i think i would yeah i think i'd hang out with him um they've yeah. got him slated at 43 i mean this is not a bad this ain't like they're uh, giving him everything no I'm hearing is the Vikings. The Vikings are going to lean into the passing game this year, um, especially with all well, the weapons that they have. So I think uh, that might be a fairly easy over, actually. Which I mean, it's a big number. It's a big number thrown on there, but I think they are going to just be uh, passing nonstop. I think that's what uh, KOC Kevin O'Connell really wants to do is Ooh, throw KOC. the ball and. Wow. And throw that was and super draw weird cool plays. I'm sorry, it I it was a slip. <laughs> That's why I said his name right afterwards. Yeah, it's it's no Corderell Flash Patterson, but it's pretty cool. I did just take him in a best ball yesterday. So you um, took Flash you know Patterson. Paul made that nickname up and it gained traction nationally. <laughs> no, that's not true. I know that's not <laughs> true because I read it in his Wikipedia. Uh, all right. Well, you think the 29 and a half passing touchdowns? Do you think that's an easy over too? No, I shouldn't say easy, but doable um yeah probably it's probably I do too you know i game, you know? between hawkinson addison and 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 jefferson man that's a lot of sons that's a law firm right there oh um, moly it is oh dang you just might you just might dang it, i just made a sweet shirt for them damn it dun, dun. law and order there you go anyways uh there you go. does packer not have any per- merch yet packing up Oh yeah, we got we got merch, bro. We got a merch shop. Don't even mess with our merch shop. You got nothing. Do we have any merch. merch for the fantasy podcast? We could do that, but I doubt we we're could have like we, nobody wants to. Nobody something. wants to. We could have me from, shirtless on it. I was gonna say, yeah, that'd probably be about it. That's you guys ever seen nipples just, like these? Oh, <laughs> I'm sure they have. It's in the zoo. Um, <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's move on quick to the Packers running backs, which, again, I don't really think they're putting a lot of uh, faith into these. I, I, for a team that they claim, which I'm hearing a lot of the, the pundits and a lot of the experts say that the Packers are going to have to lean really heavy into the running game. Well, they're giving A.J. Dillon just 700.5 rushing yards and then Aaron Jones 875 and a half. I mean, it sounds decent, but when you put those together, that's not a very – that's like 1,500-plus yards, barely. I, I just feel like if we're going to lean heavy, quote-unquote, into the running game – It'd be a lot more than that. I don't know. Um, I see well, an easy don't you think over AJ, for Aaron don't Jones. You, don't you think Jordan Love will add into the rushing game too, though? That's what I'm saying. Is uh, yeah, yeah. They're taking. Uh, uh, this is one of those things. I, I, I don't want to be. Don't quote me on this, but I'm pretty sure that Rogers or that Love is an inch taller. I think they ran a similar, almost exact forty. Love has like way, massive, massively bigger hands than he does. I think he had a better cone time, that kind of stuff. I think there's like, there's no reason to think that that Love can't run at least on par with what Rogers did in his early career, if not better. So I'm that being said, if, maybe that'll if take away in three right. three hundred yards. I mean, maybe, maybe that'll. That's take the problem away. with that's the problem with drafting Aaron Jones or AJ Dillon right now is, I mean, you throw an eight hundred seventy-five yards, seven touchdowns season out. 
you just have a flop of a running back. This is, yeah. uh, I guess what AJ I would say, Dillon, 700 yards and three touchdowns. Again, a flop of a running back. It's that two headed monster that you really got to avoid when you're drafting your fantasy team. Those, the, the ones that are committed to it. So I know the Packers are leaning into the run game, but it's going to be a three headed horse. That's really carrying the ball. In my opinion, I would stay away from the Packers run game. Uh, I don't even like the overs on this, to be honest. Uh, I just don't know what's going to happen. Yeah, what I would do, I, I understand that and I hear that. What I would do is I'd go Aaron Jones over and I go Aaron uh, AJ Dillon under because I feel like that Dillon's going to be used primarily as that short short line, uh, goal line back. I think Aaron Jones is going to be really heavily utilized in the passing game. So it's not I was going to say that. What are his, what is his receiving yard set at? Sorry to cut you off. That's what um, I they didn't two, have I think him. a lot of dump offs to Aaron Jones would make sense. So drafters didn't feel comfortable posting that line yet. So they do not have him as a receiving line, which makes sense because, like you said, I'm sure they want to see what Musgrave is looking like in uh in the in the, in the mini camps, the preseasons. I think that these, you know, these these companies aren't stupid. They're not just going to look at like OTAs and be like, oh yeah, this guy's going to get a thousand yards. Like they want to see it in preseason, see who gets injured see if there's any massive trades. Um, I They didn't give me a Aaron Jones receiving, but I would venture to say that this dude got, like I said last year, what did we say? He got almost 78 to 80 targets. I think the targets there at least stay the same, if not increase drastically. And Jordan Love, first-year quarterback, under pressure. I have to imagine that he's looking for a check down, and <laughs> Matt LaFleur is putting Aaron Jones into really comfortable positions to just take that ball for at least a two, three, four, five-yard gain. So, yeah, I'm going to grab that every time, especially in a full PPR league, like the extreme PFP league that we're going to do. I mean, think about that. Aaron Jones is a, I don't know, third, fourth, fifth round pickup, maybe even later, depending on if you're like a, with our league, Aaron Jones falls down to seventh, eighth, ninth round. You know what I'm saying? Because we're doing uh, real quick as we're in the middle of this. Where do you start drafting defensive players when you have a dynamic of a, of a, of a draft like the one I described? Because you have to start thinking about things like it's a PPR, it's a 14 man league, it's a super flex. Right away, you have to think about quarterback first. You have to think about people that are going to catch the ball right away. Then you have to throw in that wrinkle, the defensive guy. Where and how would you guys start to think about that draft strategy as quickly as I would you- say, unless you're going to get one of the premier guys uh, who could go off for sacks or interceptions, uh, Micah Parsons, I mean, uh, Diggs, I guess, not to Bosa's, on the something Cowboys, like that. But- uh, unless you're going to go with one of those guys, even those guys, you're going to kind of treat it, I think, like it's a defense uh, in the like in actual in actuality, like the whole like the whole defense. So you're still going to wait a little bit on most of you guys, but those guys will pop up like the the defense that everyone wants or the kicker that everyone wants. You know what I mean? Like it'll it'll move up a few rounds like to secure the guy that you really want. But other than that, most people will probably wait on their defensive players. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot more. I think so. There's varying opinions on that. Like Paul said, there's studs out there that get tons of tackles, sacks, and picks. There's a couple of them each year, but the variance is is a lot. Uh, it it varies year to year, but there's so many more options of who you can get that most people I think will wait. But having two of them also plays into it too. Like maybe you want to stud one early, maybe you get one later. But there's quite a few options out there to to get those points. All right. Gotcha. Okay. And let's hop in real quick. I'm not really interested in David Montgomery. I don't really, he's going to be in Detroit. They have him slated at 775 rushing yards. It's like, I don't know, maybe I just don't care enough. I'm sorry. Uh, Jameer Gibbs there. It's like, whatever. I am interested though, in the Alexander Madison line, they've got him at seven and a half rushing touchdowns. Paul, you taking the over or the under on that? I think the Vikings are probably going to be in a lot of shootouts this year. Uh, and Madison, I don't think he's that good of a back, but I do think he's a very good short yardage back. So I'm actually going to go the over here. Uh, Thinking that maybe he's just a goal line kind of smasher. Yeah. Jamal Williams I, I'm type. A, I'm not a huge Madison believer. I kind of think Ty Chandler is going to end up with some more of the hey. workload there than than Alexander Madison is. So, uh, But, I, I mean, I could be totally wrong. Who knows? Uh, I just don't. Th- I think he's a. I think he's an AJ Dillon. He's a serviceable guy. Serviceable guy. He'll get you three yards when you need it, but uh, he's not going to blow the lid off. So, okay, seven right. and a half over. That's a hum- that's a humble explanation, and I'll take that. Uh, this one here, definitely an either or for me. So Christian Watson, 
for the full season. They've got him slated at 850 and one half receiving yards. To me, I go the I, that one might be, I don't know, the five and a half receiving touchdowns. That's a run it all day to the bank. Didn't he have four in one game last year? He, he had basically – what three, was it, eight, three, three games, game. kind of thing. I mean, it was three or four in a game. He yeah. had three in a game, I think, for sure. Yeah, it was one, two, three for sure in a game. Um, I believe he had like eight and three games. So that that to me is a no brainer. I mean, it's just kind I've of. I've got stupid. a lot of shares of Christian Watson this year on my fantasy team. So as well, you should be. I mean, you looked at what he did. Well, like I said, between you're the number one receiver and you have the MVP thrown to you, I, I yeah. think you're gonna have a huge year. But even look at it this way, Paul. Last week or last year. Weeks 10 through 18, they still had Lazard. They had Cobb. They had um, a lot of other guys. They, they looked at Watson and Dobbs as these guys that we have to go to in, in case of emergency type thing. And then eventually he molded into the guy that he's the only scoring threat they have. They knew that going into week, whatever it was, 10 plus, that you have to watch out for Christian Watson. There's no one else we need to guard. It's Lazard, Cobb, um, guys like Sammy Watkins were on the team at one point. You know what I'm saying? So they, they didn't have to even <laughs> – they didn't have to think about him, anybody else. Now, okay. going into this year, they have to sit there and they have to start thinking, geez, Romeo Dobbs is year two. They have this new guy, Jalen Reed, who's year three. They have uh, or year one. They have uh, Musgrave and Kraft, two tight ends. One of them that is the, the fastest guy that's been clocked on the field. I don't know if you guys saw that. Guy is literally being clocked at 21, 22 miles per hour, faster than anyone else on the Packers practice field. That's insane. Think about it. The guy's like 6'4", six, 6'5", six, runs a 4, whatever the – F um, that that's insane to think about that being said, that's going to open up Christian Watson for a lot of one-on-one coverage, a lot of, you know, if you want to try and go like cover one on him, if you want to try to do that stuff, I, the guy is, he's not just a deep threat. He's shown that he can be a very gadgety type player. He can do end arounds. He can do the quick slants. He can be a possession receiver. He can definitely be a slot guy. Like he is a gazelle. That's a freak of nature. 850 gonna, yards. I think I got. I'm going to say uh, the the yards is interesting. So at the start of the season, I hear what you're saying with uh, people showing respect to the other guys. But at the start of the season, that's not going to be the case. They're going to be showing just or Christian Watson all of the respect. They're going to make the other guys show it. So I think he's going to get off to probably a fairly slow start, which that means you'll get a fast start from all some some of these other guys for the Packers. Yeah, uh, offensively for fantasy, but it's going to flip on its head after a little while. Once they realize they do need to kind of cover the other guys and stuff, that's going to open Christian Watson back up like you're talking about. And he, he will start producing. So um, if you're in a, if you're in a league where you can try to trade for him after the first few weeks where he is down and you expect him to bounce back, uh, that might be a great trade opportunity to try to get him at a very low value. Uh, So Maybe maybe avoid drafting him and try trading for him after a few weeks, and you might be able to get him for like a fifteenth round pick type thing. Well, and here's the deal: is that because he's he's falling down to wide receiver three type territory, that's criminal. Because he finished, like I said, ten, weeks ten through eighteen, he was a top five receiver. He was like a three point oh yards per catch type guy. He was a uh, he was up there with Justin Jefferson numbers, with the the Jamar Chase numbers, with Stephon Diggs numbers. There was nobody else in that last stretch that was even – he had like a 28% target share, I believe. So the guy is a, a freak. Um, I'm excited yeah, to but, see him. But but you got to admit that nobody else has any uh, track record, right? I mean, who else, who Dobbs, else are you going to – Dobbs and Love have a better rapport with each Dobbs, other. Dobbs – I mean, if, Dobbs just doesn't – but I'm just saying, you're an opposing defense. You're going in game planning against your offense right oh, now. Oh, yeah. I mean, who if I'm – Exactly. Who are you like game you planning said, to shut down? Christian that's, Jones, Christian Watson, and Aaron Jones. Those, those are the two guys you're trying to shut down, right? Exactly. So the, but that's going to open think, up now. We last year we did not have a Luke Musgrave, and we didn't have a Jaden Reed. We had Alan Lazard, and we had Robert Randall Cobb, and Robert Tonyan. You know what I mean? Those those are these are very different groups. Well, now. yeah, but you're assuming that those rookies are successful right away, uh, right? Uh, you're assuming that Jaden Reed is better than. Uh, Alan Lazard, you know what I mean? Like it's just it's not hard to assume, you but yeah, don't. Okay, <laughs> I mean, you guys talked about Alan Lazard last year. I mean, you guys were pretty jazzed on him a whole bunch of the time. <laughs> we, we, we gotta go back and look at the tape. I'll go. I'll go. Check the tape. All right, let's let's jump ahead here. Justin Jefferson. I'm gonna skip over DJ Moore just because I. All right, you know what? Let's go back. DJ Moore, five receiving touchdowns. Ah, huge year. 
I think that's an easy over the receiving yards. I don't think it's going to get there. 860. I don't think it's going to get there. I just, I do not think Justin Fields is a passing quarterback. I think that he can maybe do it in spurts. He did it in Ohio state roughly, and he looked decent while he did it, but it's, it's a different ball game. Well, he's going to have, he's going to have what? 28, 2,900 yards passing. Who do you think those are? Where do you think those yards are going? Running backs, dump offs, tight ends, commit. It's my theory. Maybe Darnell every now and then steals some. All right, Jeff and Jefferson, they only felt comfortable at the time of me getting this eight and a half receiving touchdowns. That to me, again, seems like a screaming easy over, but. Yes and no. He's not a, that's not his game. Touchdowns isn't necessarily his like. He's more just a win every, every play possession receiver type thing. Yeah, kind of, you know what I mean? Like, uh, so I, I don't know. I, I, KJ Osborne, I bet, has more touchdowns than Jefferson this year. Ooh, Hawk- did Hawkinson. you hear that, Tony? I would, say Hawk- I would say both him and Hawkinson, both do, to be honest. There's more, there's more end zone threats than Jefferson is to me. I, I mean, I, hopefully I'm wrong. I don't know. T- Tony, you really you, think that? Did you hear that? Yeah, I did. Do you really believe that, Paul? Yeah. Uh-huh. After saying that you thought he looks – or you heard that he looks better in camp than ever than before? Ever before. Yes. Okay. Well. All right then. I get. We're not I think you get Justin close. Jefferson overall. I think you get. Clo- I think you get close to the red zone, and I think teams are overloading on him. Hmm. Okay. Well, and then that's that. That is actually true. Vikings but, fans bring stupid opinions sometimes. It's okay. No, Sorry. I mean honestly, it is kind of my theory <laughs> with Christian Watson is that because they're so worried about him that it lets other guys like Musgrave. Jane Reed and Dobbs eat because when they get into those critical situations, all they know from the year before is that we have to stop this guy. So they don't know about the other guys that they have. I'll I'll, I'll just, I'll I'll secede that. Okay. Well, um, that pretty much brings us over the drafters over unders, at least for the NFC North for the the guys. There's a couple quick news and notes here that I'll just blow past. Alvin Kamara ended up being suspended for three games by the NFL. Jalen Hurts. How? How is it three games when gambling I, gets you six? I don't know, dude. I don't. And not even gambling on football necessarily or anything. You know what I mean? Like, right. Wasn't he like racing know. turtles or something like that? No. Who? Kam- Kamara? Not Kamara. What was the other one? All the oh. Lions. Weren't the Lions, though, like drafting from inside the facility or like doing? In a hotel lobby. They were in a hotel lobby for the most part is what, I... is what it ended up being. And I'm just saying, Kamara, that video is, I mean, it's. Ray Rice hit a lady, so I mean it's not that. But it's, <laughs> it's, it's it's not and that he far stopped off. the elevators for a while. Just saying, dude. Okay, I'm just saying the Kamara thing for three games. Like Ray Rice gets blackballed from the NFL, and right. Kamara gets three games for that. I mean, I don't know. It just seems a little light to me. It should have been at least six minimum. I'd say same as gambling. Yeah, no, I agree. Yeah. Jalen Hurts, he's building new chemistry with AJ Brown. David Montgomery expected to be the co-starter with Jameer Gibbs. Yeah, no crap. You guys signed him. Uh, Cooper Cup upgraded from uh, two day to day. Zach Charbonnet shoulder returns to practice Thursday. That could be a weird spot. Um, that that Seattle running back lineup. Not sure what to think about that. Traylon Burks learning a new receiver spot. Cool. That's cool. Josh Jacobs is receiving interest from the Broncos and the Chiefs. I don't know what to That'd think about cool. that. That guy. That guy might be one of the he's one of the more overrated running backs. I think that's ever played the game who got good in a hot spot for one year. And now he's like, give me everything or I don't play. And I just don't think that's the smartest thing to do in the modern running back era, but Hey, that's just me. Garrett Wilson ankle likely to return to practice soon. Aaron Rodgers really hope so. Ugh. Dak Prescott unlikely to play in the preseason at all. Lamar Jackson, Ravens quarterback struggles in Saturday practice. What does that mean? You struggled in practice. Devon A. Chain day to day with an undisclosed injury. And then uh, again, we touched on Alvin Kamara. That's basically the modern news and notes. This is being recorded again Sunday night. Not sure when this podcast is going to hit y'all. Hopefully Monday or Tuesday or something around those parts. Do you guys want to get out of here or should be quick? I, actually, you know what? Let's talk about. Have you ever implemented or even thought about or strategically tried either the hero RB strategy or the zero RB strategy? That basically means real quick to break it down. The hero RB strategy is that maybe in like your first three rounds and probably your first two, you do something like a Nick Chubb, maybe a Derrick Henry, um, one of those solid running backs, a, a Jonathan Taylor in years past. And you just say, all right, that's my guy. I know that he's a solid start every single week. And then you go straight either 
wide receiver, maybe pepper in a Kelsey or a really top rated quarterback until gosh, five, six, seventh, maybe even eighth round. And then you try to find either usually a guy that is a second string on a very big offense, or you find a first year rookie flyer or a guy that's maybe going to get some upside. So, and the opposite of that would be the zero RB strategy. That's pretty much where you, just as it sounds, you don't even think about running back until about maybe rounds five, six, seven, eight. And again, you're looking for second stringers on really high scoring offensive teams. You're looking for guys with a lot of receiving upside, um, looking for guys that are the number two that really are almost splitting time. And if that one gets hurt, then they're the premier back for sure. What do you guys think about that type of, of situation, especially in a league now, like we've talked about, depending on if it's a best ball or a standard scoring or whatever the scoring, uh, it just seems like the NFL has gotten away from the uh, the running game in general. It's basically there just to present the option to run so that you can pass. Any thoughts on that? And we'll get out of here. Go ahead, Paul. Uh, I, I actually have employed both strategies a lot in my best ball teams this year. Um, just depends on how the board falls to me, to be honest. Right. Uh, That's the biggest point. So, yeah. I mean, receivers have kind of really remember the, I mean, even five years ago, running backs were the king of going early in the draft. It has definitely switched to wide receivers. Um, so if I end up with a top pick and it's wide receivers going off the draft right away, going off the thing right away, I'll I'll get in on that and then I'll lean heavily into wide receivers. If I'm uh eight through twelve or so, uh, and you can get a solid running back or two, I've done that a lot. I've been I've ended up with a lot of, I think the other day I took I ended up with a Saquon Barkley in the second round and Jonathan Taylor in the third round with their weird contract situations and go, stuff going on and all these receivers moving up and the tight ends moving up, sometimes getting value in your running backs can set you up for real success uh, later on as everyone's trying to get their receivers. So uh, it really depends on how the draft falls for me, to be honest. No, that makes sense. Tony, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I, I've done a lot of both as well. I've probably already done more best ball drafts than I drafts than I care to admit. Um <laughs> I end up, I feel like I end up wanting to go hero RB uh, when I'm trying to mix it up. And then as soon as I get to like round four or five, I balance myself you panic. out. Do you panic? Yeah, I panic. Yeah, I panic. Uh, but but I, I've drafted a couple. One I got last week that I really liked. It was a DraftKings, like a, one of the little $3 ones. But it went uh, McCaffrey, Pollard, and then Keenan Oof. Allen fell, and I got Keenan Allen. So my my starting team ended out with Fields, McCaffrey, Pollard, Allen, Hollywood Brown, Pittman, Dobbins in the flex, and Dalton Schultz. Mm. I also took Herbert at 51. So I double stacked. I had Fields and then Herbert. So I've got kind of two good quarterbacks, which was something I don't usually do. I usually get one good one and then, you know, a couple of lesser ones. So it, it kind of rounded out. Into a weird Fields, wait, 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 wait. Did you say quarterbacks? Fields and who? Uh, Herbert. Herbert. Oh, Justin, Justin, Justin not Khalil. Not Khalil. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I got I got Allen and Herbert, uh, and then I had Fields, and I can't remember who I stacked him with. Oh, it's a naked field set. I didn't get any uh, Bears players besides that. So. Well, I mean, yeah, and that's kind of something I've – They've said that like basically the mentality, like you talked about, was five, six, seven years ago. You had to have those solid – locked running backs one and two at least maybe a third great starter and now the league has just gone into such a pass especially if again if it's a ppr league you have to start looking at a lot of these guys these later round dudes that i mean like to me that's why i have put so much stock in aaron jones it's not just because he's a packer it's because i know that they're going to give him his rushing yards but i also know they're going to give him a ton of swing passes the guy is one of the most underrated wide receiver wide receivers pass catchers in the league at the running back position and there's not a lot of guys at running back that are dual threats like that there's just not what were you going to say paul i said you were lying it's because he's a packer well i mean that helps (laughs) I love, <laughs> I, I love him all right well uh is there anything else you guys want to talk about before we get out of here a couple of things real quick uh do we have a date for the packer net fans extreme podcast draft yes yet there are so What's for the, the regular date? draft the, the, the og draft i believe is on my birthday 
they're, so they're either one of the two. One of them's on August 30th, which is a Wednesday at seven o'clock. The next one, it's either the PFP Extreme one or the OG one. That'll be on Thursday night at seven o'clock. So August 30th, Wednesday, August 31st, a Thursday, both at seven o'clock. Again, for the PFP okay. Extreme, 14 man, PPR, two defensive players, super flex. It is a crazy, crazy league to get into. It's going to be super fun. $20 buy-in. Again, if you guys want to know the payouts, they are going to be as such. First place gets $168 payout. Second place, 84. Third place gets their money back plus eight bucks. And if any of us win, we're going to be giving it to charity. If I win, I'm going to be giving it to Fertile Ground Ranch Discipleship Ministry, as well as for the rest of the year, I'm going to be playing for charity. And on anything that I divulge on this podcast, even if I win like a million bucks, I'm I'm probably going to take half of it. I'm not going to lie, but I'm going to give the other (laughs) half. (laughs) <laughs> to Fertile Ground Ranch, to Supplement Mini, or uh, or any other charities that you guys want. And um, if you have questions, comments, if you guys want us to start more leagues, if you're interested in joining a league, hit us up at PackerNetFantasy at gmail.com. You can hit us up at Twitter slash X or Instagram at underscore PF podcast. It's been great catching up with you guys. Uh, even great talking to you, Tony and Paul, even though Paul's a dirty, dirty Viking fan. I can't say enough about uh, probably trying to get Justin. Oh, he's the worst. He's the worst kind of person. Shut trying up, to get man. Justin back is, is like pulling teeth, but he claims he's coming back next week. He's uh, he's coming out of retirement. He's pulling a Tom Brady. And that being said, go pack go. And F Tom Brady. Got Tom you, Brady, baby. There you go. All right, guys. Take it easy. <laughs>